Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about Mega Man 6. We are more than halfway through our Mega Man marathon and having a great time doing it. The plot for this one is a mysterious benefactor known as Mr. X is holding a robot tournament with the best robot fighters and then he mind controls them to do his bidding. And I just want to say these robots are surprisingly easy to mind control and take over to do villainous deeds. So I just think that maybe we should up the firewalls on these robots or something just to make them uh, less hack susceptible He says that he was behind all of dr. Wily's evil schemes from the very beginning, but no longer needs dr. Wily so Fortunately, we have rid ourselves finally of dr. Wily or have we hmm? I think the initial premise of this plot would have been much cooler rather than just mind controlling them How about we just hold a robot tournament and Mega Man is trying to compete in it? and he has to go through all of the eight robots levels and defeat them in order to become the robot champion. At least plot wise, it would have been a little different compared to its five previous games rather than a big baddie mind controlling these robots. The presentation is fairly similar to the other five Mega Man games that we have played. This one came out in 1993 and I just feel like they came out with one of these every single year and just repurposed most of the assets from previous games and, and make things a little different. One of the differences in this one is when you select a level to go into it'll do this brief little introduction of the evil robot master and it'll show like all these stats up top like his attack is 78 his weight is 128 kilograms and it's just like I'm pretty sure all of these robot masters have the exact same stats in life force but they tried to make them seem a little bit different and at the bottom it'll say like tomahawk man master of the tomahawks or or air man master of wind you know it's just little introduction like that to make them seem a little more menacing. Now there are a couple of differences with Rush compared to previous games and Rush Coil is no longer here but its replacement I think is so much better. So instead of summoning Rush for uh, the, the coil or Rush Jet where you ride him, instead Mega Man fuses with Rush and looks way cooler and has unlimited ammo. So there are two different Rush combinations that Mega Man fuses with. The first being Rush Jet where you have this little hover thing so your ammo will slowly deplete as you are using this jet pack but then it refills when you touch the ground so this makes platforming so much easier and manageable. The second thing Rush Power and this makes Mega Man's range way shorter but he punches and the punches do a lot more damage and you can charge up your punch to destroy cracked blocks and using these Rush combinations you are able to access areas that give you little bonus items items that you couldn't previously access if you did not unlock these rush combinations. Now why wouldn't you just stick with a rush ability since you have unlimited ammo and it helps with platforming. In order to use these rush fusions you sacrifice the use of your slide and your charge shot ability. So there still is a need for your basic Mega Man suit. On the topic of abilities whenever you unlock a new ability it'll give this brief little footage of Mega Man using it. It doesn't explain what it does but you can kind of get an idea of what it is before or you actually go into a level and use it. There is a plant shield again. This time I think it was Flower Man is the name and basically these uh, uh, flowers surround you. I don't think you can project this one either so you have to get up close and personal in order to damage enemies with it. It seems to be a favorite amongst the Mega Man designers having a, a shield around you though. I just felt like the abilities in general weren't that great in this one. You know, nothing really wowed me and impressed me. Most of them just seem to be a projectile of some kind and shot at a different degree. Like, uh, Air Man shoots a little tornado that rides around the floor, and granted, if it hits an enemy, it launches them up into the air, but it's just like, it doesn't do anything extra if you were to just defeat it, you know? Centaur Man kind of does this little Cut Man's ability that does a little loop-de-loop, -loop, but they are all projectiles. Like, nothing seems really interesting or cool in this one. Beat makes a reoccurrence in this game from Mega Man 5, but rather than having to get all of the letters in every single level, Level in order to unlock them. They just give you a letter every time you beat a level, so you don't have to hunt them down, and everyone is guaranteed to gain access to Beat by the time you reach the end fortress. Now, Beat, I feel like, is a little nerfed in this game. Maybe they realized Beat was too strong in Mega Man 5, where he would automatically attack enemies. He doesn't really seem to want to hurt bosses, only like the main weaker enemies while you are playing through the level. I did notice this in Mega Man 5, and maybe it was in 4, but 
but when you are charging up a charge shot and you get hit, it resets it. And this wasn't always the case when the charge shot was first introduced. You could constantly charge it up, but it makes the charge shot more difficult to pull off. If you are charging up your shot and then you get hit by an enemy, you gotta try and recharge it up all over again. The music is about on the same level as Mega Man 5. We still haven't hit the peak of Mega Man 2 and 3, but it's, you know, it's all right. Maybe the novelty of the Mega Man chip tunes is just wearing off, so it doesn't seem as great to me. But my favorite track in this game would probably be Windman's level. Speaking of levels, I felt like the level design in Mega Man 5 was much better than this game. Mega Man 5 seemed to implement all of these new ideas and platforming, and this game just seems to be more of a straight shooter, side-scrolling platformer. There's no M tanks in this game like there was in Mega Man 5, or at least if there was, I didn't find any. Maybe they realized M tanks were just way too powerful. Proto Man does not make an appearance in this game either. Maybe it's because he was framed in Mega Man 5 and he needed some time to recoup after that bad publicity. And come to think of it, we got a mention of Roll. I believe it was at the title screen of Mega Man 3 or 4 because we learn Mega Man's real name is Rock and then we get a brief mention of Roll. We still haven't seen any appearance of her and I know she makes an appearance in future Mega Man games. Maybe she will make an occurrence in Mega Man 7. Overall, I don't think that this game was as enjoyable as Mega Man 5. That one is still held in the top spot in terms of this Mega Man marathon, but it's still a fun game. I just feel like as we continue on through the Mega Man games, they get more and more fair and more playable as well. It would be hard for me to go back to something like Mega Man 1 after progressing this far into the game, especially getting uh, access to things like the, the rush jet that makes platforming so much easier. I believe this is it as far as this Mega Man aesthetic. Mega Man 7 tends to mix up the look here. Maybe that's because we move on to the Super Nintendo era. Don't quote me on that though. I'm not sure when the Super Nintendo dropped, but I, I do think that Mega Man gets a facelift in Mega Man 7. So I'm going to pull that up now and check it out and I will give my casual review on that soon. So tune in next time for Mega Man 7 and my thoughts on that. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about Mega Man 6 or the Mega Man series in general and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye!